brought to you by Charity Mobile, the phone company that shares your values. More information is available at CharityMobile.com. For months I have been warning you that the modernist heretics in Rome will make their next move against the traditional Mass, and by extension against the traditional Catholic faith, and that they plan to do it with another document that will hammer the Latin Mass groups like the FSSP and similar organizations. We have additional reporting on that, which makes it clear that they are almost certainly also going to be coming after the so-called Unicorn Novus Ordo Masses, those reverent Masses, as well, and I have some reassuring words from Bishop Athanasius on what traditional Catholics are to do in the face of all this, so let's get into it. We often ask why the modernists just won't leave us alone, and that why they won't just let us worship as our ancestors did, and gripe among ourselves about the state of things. But we know why they won't leave us alone. They can't risk the consequences of inaction. The traditional liturgy, and especially the sudden growth in attendance of the traditional Mass by younger Catholics since Samorum Pontificum was released, is a threat to the revolution of Vatican II in the Church. It's a threat to all the changes the enemies of the Church who had infiltrated her institutions had wrought upon the mystical body of Christ. The book, AA 1025, Memoirs of an Anti-Apostle, is the confession of one of these figures who had infiltrated the Church with the aim of destroying the faith. Their work in the early 20th century had been to bring unto the church what we see now, a reverence and disbelief in the fundamentals of the faith. From that book, the author says this of the changes that those who infiltrated wanted to do to the Mass. Pay close attention, this will be familiar to you. Quote, to weaken further the notion of the real presence of Christ, all decorum will have to be set aside. No more costly embroidered vestments, no more sacred music, especially no more Gregorian chant but a music and jazz style. No more sign of the cross, no more genuflections, but only dignified and stern attitudes. Moreover, the faithful will have to break themselves of the habit of kneeling, and this will be absolutely forbidden when receiving communion. Very soon the host will be laid in the hand in order that all notion of the sacred be erased. End quote. Mission accomplished. All research shows that only 30% of regular mass attenders believe in the real presence at the Novus Ordo. In the traditional Mass, belief in the real presence hovers at around 99% for regular attenders. This growth in attending the traditional liturgy threatens to undo their revolution in Tierra and Cope in the Church. Hence, why they must end the traditional Mass altogether. That has been most of our prediction for the past couple of years, and they made it obvious with Traditionis Custodis and its follow-up response to a non-existent dubia that their aim is to bury the Mass and the faith forever. And now we have this confirmation of that. From Gloria TV. Crackdown on old right institutes continues in March. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I and a few other commentators all at the same time reported on whispers coming from Rome that the FSSP and similar groups would be the next target of the modernists. Here we have the confirmation. The original story came from LaCroix, but it was behind a paywall. Gloria TV's summary will be sufficient for our purposes, though. Quote, Francis and his hardliners are preparing two more liturgical documents, reports LaCroix. In March, one decree will be fired at those old rite institutes which have sold themselves to the Vatican. Another will replace the document Liturgium Authenticum, which controls the quality of Novus Ordo liturgical translations. LaCroix further knows that Francis's suppression of the Ecclesia Dei Commission, which was responsible for the Roman Rite, was an act of vengeance because Ecclesia Dei had authorized the Holy Week celebration according to the 1954 Roman Missal, which Pius XII in 1955 replaced with an ill-fated recast. According to LaCroix, Francis anticipated the publication of Traditionis Custodis, originally due in mid-September to mid-summer, because this merciless crackdown was important to Francis, who accelerated everything in July after his operation, because he saw the possible end of his pontificate. I think he was afraid to die, a source told LaCroix. However, for the salvation of his poor soul, he would have done better to present himself in front of the divine judge without having published this document. End quote. So two things, really. A crackdown on groups like the FSSP, with the aim of forcing their parishioners and much of their clergy into the SSPX, though none of the stories say why they would do that or what the goal would be. And I'll tell you exactly why they'll do it. There's only one reason to push the clergy who want nothing to do with liturgical abuses heaped upon the faith in the new Mass and the laity into the SSPX, and that is to once again illicitly excommunicate everybody involved, whether it's the priests, the bishops, and I suspect the laity associated with the Society of St. Pius X. Such an act would be illicit, since they've done nothing wrong but attempt to preserve the faith. But we are dealing with heretic thugs in control of Rome. 
And if you found yourself going to Mass with the SSPX because of the things Rome is doing, there's nothing wrong with that, despite the rather concerted propaganda campaign waged against the SSPX by certain groups and outlets, especially in the United States. And as a consequence of that, many are afraid of the SSPX. Between the anti-traditional Catholic propaganda coming from outlets allegedly on our side of things, and between the chorus of mainstream Catholic voices calling them schismatic, it's understandable. Recently, though, Bishop Athanasius of Kazakhstan recently came out and cleared this up. From Gloria TV. It is licit for men to enter St. Pius X's seminaries. Look, if... The Society of St. Pius X were really a schismatic organization, it would not be licit for men to go to seminary there. And if it's okay for them to learn the faith and be formed for their priesthood with the SSPX, it's okay for you to go to Mass with them. But according to the good auxiliary bishop, quote, The Society of St. Pius X is not schismatic, Bishop Athanasius told the confraternity of Our Lady of Fatima. He explains the Vatican stated several times that Pius X is not schismatic, but only in a, quote, irregular canonical situation as if the Vatican would care about canon law. Cardinal Ladaria, prefect for the Congregation of the Doctrine of the Faith, said in a recent interview that Pius X is not outside of the Church. The good bishop calls this an affirmation of high officials of the Vatican. A visible sign of communion is, for him, that Pius X names Francis and the local bishop during Mass. It is only due to the extreme extraordinary crisis that the Society of St. Pius X cannot submit itself under the Vatican's full control. They had not the guarantee to live fully, integrally, the Catholic faith and liturgy, as the Ecclesia communities have now no full guarantee how to continue. The crisis expresses itself in the ambiguous texts of Vatican II, in practices of the Holy See like interreligious dialogue and the Novus Ordo itself, which in part undermines the Mass's sacrificial character, meaning the questionable nature of many of the offertory prayers. Therefore, the bishop calls it illicit that a man may enter a Pius X seminary, he warns, however, of the danger of an ecclesiastical ghetto and tells Pius X that they have to open themselves and to develop a love for the Roman Church and the Apostolic See, as if this were a feature of the conciliar church. End quote. Now, clearly the person who put that article together isn't as much a fan of the good bishop as I am, but so be it. But there is a second point in this article. Like Samorum Pontificum, another important liturgical document will be replaced. Liturgium Authenticum, released in March of 2001, which sought to preserve Latin and Gregorian chant and the rest of the reverent hallmarks of the Mass in the new Mass, and really what it really sought to do was to control the quality of the translations of the Roman Missal. That sounds familiar. Well, since the Vat Council, the Vatican has reiterated this numerous times, and for whatever reason, it always gets ignored by bishops and priests around the world. The reverence of the Novus Ordo Mass is the rule, not the exception, and Liturgium Authenticum was the most recent and most binding attempt to correct errors. That document is going to be replaced in the next few weeks. A report on that here when it happens. One of two things could be the case with it. Either Francis will finally be trying to enforce liturgical decorum, or, much more likely, in the name of enculturated liturgy and the Amazon Synod and all the rest, they'll remove all requirements for Latin in the Mass and allow essentially for clown Masses and witch Masses and all the rest that we all know will happen when those Amazon right enculturated Masses start getting promoted by Rome. So brace yourselves, because they are moving with lightning speed to bury all resemblance of Catholicism from our Sunday worship. And hovering in the background over this story of new restrictions on the Latin Mass coming is something that Marate Chaley reported on Twitter. The Francis is dying. Yeah, it's that rumor again. This time of a condition of the pancreas causing him to wither away. And while it may be true, since the man is 85, I recommend not necessarily believing it to be the case, nor do I suggest rejoicing if it is true. Instead, pray for his interior conversion. But this rumor was first reported by Rurate Celi, citing one of their sources in Rome that had been 100% on the money about Traditionus Custodis months before that happened. And it was quickly followed by a strange story that hit the mainstream uh, well, mainstream headlines, that most of us saw in passing probably didn't think much of. Francis went to a music store in Rome and bought some music. And honestly, I didn't care about that story when it happened. But paparazzi snapped a picture of Francis and his papal whites coming out of the music store. Again, no big deal, honestly. Until I saw this. From Gloria TV. Mathematician proves that Francis lied. The story is this. It was statistically impossible for a Vatican photographer to have found Francis by accident at that music store. The picture was staged, despite what Francis had said before, because the picture was taken by an authorized papal photographer. <laughs> Think about that for a second. Quote, Francis claimed that the Francis journalist, Javier Martinez Brocal, coincidentally was on the scene when he left a Roman record shop, 
which he privately visited on January 11th, was analyzed by a statistician for LiberoQuotidiano.it. The result, the probability for one of Rome's 3 million residents to encounter Francis in this moment was 0.0009%. There are 200 journalists accredited with the Holy See. The probability that one of them bumped into Francis was 0.000012%. In other words, there was a point to that picture being snapped, probably to squash rumors of Francis's impending doom. This rumor pops up two or three times a year, so I guess this is just the first instance of that rumor happening in 2022. If you want to do something proactive, the Latin Mass Society of the UK is trying to get traditional Catholics to go to these synodal meetings as a means of fighting back. Their proposal, which is geared towards the United Kingdom, but it's worth taking note of here, their proposal is that traditional Catholics attend these synodal meetings and use the resources the Latin Mass Society has provided for participation. According to their website, quote, the Holy See has invited contributions to the Synod on Synodality, which is planned for 2023. Previous exercises of consultation, such as the Family Synod in 2015, suggest that the contributions which are allowed to influence the final document can be selected for their conformity to the agenda of Synod organizers. Nevertheless, a failure by Catholics attached to the Church's ancient liturgy to make their voices known would make are in non-inclusion inevitable. Furthermore, views not included at later stages will at least have been viewed in earlier stages, and at a local level perhaps by more open-minded individuals. Without placing any exaggerated hopes on the ultimate outcome, we should do what we can to ensure that our views are part of the mix. This document is designed to help you take part in this consultation as effectively as possible. The deadline for submission is the 2nd of March, 2022, Ash Wednesday, end quote. The process in the UK involves submitting your thoughts to the synodal leaders in writing, and the Latin Mass Society has these suggestions. First, do not allow anyone reading it to rapidly miss the entire point of what you're doing, that you value the older liturgy and that it actually contributes to the church in the forms of unity, support for the marginalized, and all the rest. You've got to speak their language, basically. Such points should be considered by those summarizing the responses. Don't give them an excuse to ignore it by coming across as someone who is schismatic, angry, or, or a rad trad extremist. And then they say this, quote, While bearing in mind the Synod's fundamental question, what steps does the Spirit invite us to take in order to grow in our quote-unquote journeying together? Keep your responses brief, polite, and to the point. We suggest limiting yourself to between 50 and 200 words, end quote. Keep it brief, in other words, and keep it respectful, even if you don't like the people involved. If you're in the UK, please consider participating in this. We must all work together to preserve the liturgy, and we must all actually be smart about how to go about doing it. And I've got a link to their, to the Latin Mass Society's website in my show notes today at returntotradition.org, so go please have a look. And so yes, we have confirmation that they're going to hammer the Ecclesia Day groups in March and likely try to destroy all Latin Mass influences in the Novus Ordo. What will you do? Will you submit to their errors? Will you listen to voices who want you to stay away from the holdouts who refuse to go along with this? They're going to get very loud and shrill in the coming months. Mark my words. Let me know in the comments, please. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.